If you've ever done a kitchen remodel, you know that you have to start with demo day. And this is exactly what we were doing with my family for our kitchen here at the Rosal house where we currently live. Hi guys, this is Susie from Susie Makes It. In this video, I'm gonna show you the whole process of how I did the kitchen remodel with my family and how it all happened, step by step. So if you like this kind of content, please go ahead and subscribe. There will be more videos like this to show you all the remodels that I've done in the house. And also give it a like and comment as well to tell me what you think. I would love to hear from you. Let me just start by telling you that the kitchen itself was really in good shape. It didn't, it didn't look like it was a bad kitchen, but we just couldn't really move in that island. And we were redoing the floors uh, because there was carpet there before and the carpet started lifting even though it was new carpet because that's the previous owners had redone all the carpet before. Uh, but it started lifting like a month or two after we had moved in. So we decided, no, let's just go with laminate floors. We have two doggies and that's not going to work out either. It's going to get really messy. Our dogs are trained and we're trained, but still there was like so much dirt in that carpet. So we decided to redo the floors and as we went all along the living room and starting to get into the kitchen, we needed to demo that kitchen island. This kitchen was gonna be a completely new experience for me remodeling because even though I had done the remodel in the Madonna house, if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and check it out right here. I'm gonna leave a card so you can check it out. For this kitchen, we wanted to do all new cabinets. In the Madonna house, we did reused cabinets, which worked out great because it was such a blessing. We got a whole uh, kitchen from somebody at, I think it was $500, and I just pieced it together I don't know how guys, but I did it and it, it turned out really good. For this kitchen though, I wanted to do new cabinetry. So I needed to do a lot of research to see which were the best and also more convenient with pricing. So after a lot of research, I did come up with IKEA as my option to get new cabinets with the finish that I wanted. They were already finished as well. I didn't have to paint them because if I gotten them from a, um, the Home Depot or Lowe's, I had to do the finishing of the painting. I was not about to do that in this kitchen, so I went with the IKEA kitchen. Part of the kitchen plan was to get rid of that wall right there, which I didn't know in the beginning if it was load bearing or not, and I was super scared. And so I did a lot of research, but that wall needed to go because part of my plan for the kitchen was to get rid of that wall. I saw that it wasn't load bearing at all. And I was also able to get another wall from a bathroom in the master bathroom out of the way. But this one was my first wall to take down just like that. So my sister helped. Um, I had to use one of those reciprocating saws because it was able to just saw through the drywall and then we were just like hammering everything out of the way and being careful because there was an electrical outlet, not outlet, I'm sorry, an electrical switch for the dining room right there and so we had to be really, really careful of not cutting those cables. This demo had to go super fast and as you can see here, this is of course hyperlapse but honestly my sister was helping and she works so fast, I was trying to keep up with her. My brother was helping too and everybody, my mom was managing of course, <laughs> but we were trying to get the floors, the laminate floors installed and we also had to get rid of all of the stuff from the kitchen so that we could install those floors. On top of getting rid of this wall, we also had to get the cabinets that you see right there demoed, but it had to be in a controlled way. You could say we had to uninstall them in order to be able to use them still 
during the whole construction and remodel. And guys, the satisfaction that you get from removing a wall is like no other. It was just the same when we removed the whole kitchen part, the kitchen island, I mean. It was so liberating. It felt like a new place completely and I was just able to see my plan kind of like start taking shape. That dishwasher was no good at all, so we just had to take it out and throw it in the trash. We were also taking out all that vinyl floor, which was throughout the bathrooms and here in the kitchen. That thing was like, there's nothing in between the subfloor and the vinyl. It's just like nothing. <laughs> we were so focused on moving on to the next thing that when we got rid of that last bit of the wall, all we did was stand there for a second or two, say great job and continue on with the next thing. Cleaning is one of the things that you have to be prepared when you're going to do a remodel because there is so much dust that's coming out of the whole thing that you're demoing that having a good vacuum is something that I recommend for you guys. One of the things that we kept doing was putting the cabinets on the wall, taking them off the wall and just moving them around and putting them back on while we were trying to do the floors and just do the whole kitchen. So that was very important. Right here we were um, cleaning out where the refrigerator was because we were starting to put the floors and everything needed to be clean and ready. Our Coco and Chubby were always afraid of like big noises and big things moving. So we just had to make sure that whenever we were moving big stuff, we would take them outside. Somebody would go and stay with them out in the car while we had to hammer or do like all these big noises. One of the tools that I would recommend when you're doing floors is to have a miter saw. In this case though, I think both having the table saw and the miter saw would be very good because with one you can just chop uh, horizontally and the table saw is going to do the, the long cuts, which sometimes you need when you're finishing the floors. As we were getting to the other side of the wall to finish installing the floors, it was kind of crazy because the one cabinet that we didn't uninstall or take out was the kitchen sink. And what we had to do was nothing short of miraculous to get underneath the cabinet, lift it where it wouldn't break any pipes or anything like that, but still were able to do the clickable installation of the floors. But don't ask me to do it again because I have no idea how it all actually came together. I'm just thankful that I was able to get through that part. My sweet sister was super helpful again and I cannot stop saying thank you to her because she helped me so much through all this. But she's an artist, she's not a constructor or a DIYer. <laughs> and she made that very clear when she made a, um, a fun cartoon of what had happened to her arms when she was doing all the floors in the house. I had to use the jigsaw and do a little canal, you could say, to move the cable that was for the dining room light and move it over to go inside of the wall. These cabinets were very interesting because as you can see there, it's only the frame that was there. There was not, it was not a cabinet box. It was just like the little sticks creating a box. And then there was panels that would make it kind of like stabilize and make them uh, be able to, to stand. But we had to be really careful when we uninstalled them so that we could reuse them. And they were kind of wonky, but we were able to put them back on the, on the wall. They were not attached to the wall, but we were able to make them uh, stand on their own. 
my dad was designated to put the kitchen stove back on and we did it a few times because there, we ran into some hiccups but at least he was happy here in this picture being happy and doing something that you love i think is very important and that shows in the pictures and it's just the memories that i get when i see everything reminds me that it was a good time it was stressful but not overwhelming now that the floors were all installed in the living room dining room and through the kitchen it was time to start doing the kitchen island and i decided to start with the kitchen island because that was going to give us a lot of storage right away or as fast as possible so that we could start putting things there and then we could move on to the rest of the kitchen the first thing that i had to tackle was the kitchen island base and this is not only for the kitchen island but if you're doing any type of cabinetry your base is going to be what you have to start with it has to be completely level and I did it here with some plywood because I heard and I saw, researched all that, that it was less prone to bowing. I did use some, uh, I think it was six by fours in the middle, but I cut them down to the, the height that I was doing my base at, which is regularly about three and a half um, inches height. And as you can see here, my sister had already assembled all of the cabinets for the kitchen island and all I had to do was make that base completely perfect level which that was a challenge because that floor was not even at all I don't know if you noticed but there was a vent right in the middle of the kitchen island so we had to figure out how to get that air from the vent out of underneath there otherwise it would be a problem so what I came up with, as you can see here, is we used some flashing to create a rectangle box and that was going to help us to extend that vent to come out from the kitchen base right in the middle. And then I got a really cute vent register so that it could fit exactly the height of the toe kick. I used foil tape that is used for dryer installation and HVAC and I also used insulation on top of that so that the drawers were not going to get overheated with the air that's coming out. We needed to have some electrical run to the cabinets in the kitchen island Thankfully, the previous kitchen island that we demoed already had those connections, so I just had to reinstall everything, put it all new where I wanted it to be. The microwave is going to go there, and then we're going to have some outlets on either side of the kitchen island. There was constant leveling at all points when I was installing all of the cabinets. I had to get them together, and they had to be screwed into each other, and then leveled so that I could have everything perfect for the countertop to come on. There are so many options when it comes to the kitchen design, but in my case, I knew that I wanted to go with a white kitchen with gold accents. And so that's what I uh, leaned into and found all of the things that I needed to, to get. I knew that for this kitchen, I wanted to have a white farmer's kitchen sink. So that's what I searched for all over until actually I found one in Amazon. I also needed a new dishwasher which I ended up getting one from Best Buy and this was a GE which is working really nicely. When it comes to the countertops we had so many options but I think we were pretty determined on quartz and that's what we went for. We did think for a minute there to go with butcher block but 
We had done it in the other kitchen, so we really wanted to get stone this time. We were really rocking those kitchen floating cabinets and some of them were almost about to fall apart, but thankfully we would hold them together as best as possible using the countertop as well that we had before previously. We just had to cut some of the countertop, but it was working fine because we were able to cook in the meantime and until we were able to assemble the rest of the cabinetry, it was going to be like this until we could replace them. Assembling those IKEA kitchen cabinets is one of those things as well as with the furniture that it's either too easy because you've done that before or it just gets really frustrating because you don't know how to do it. I had to read a little bit and still it was kind of like confusing because those instructions just don't give you enough to go by. My sister came to the rescue. She was the master of cabinet assembly. So she came over and it made it much, much easier to get the rest of the cabinet done. Okay guys, so here is how it's looking behind the stove. And what we have done here is somebody came and moved the gas line from here on this side towards this side. So we're gonna patch up this side because they didn't do anything. They don't do any of that, they just moved it. So luckily I can do this stuff and I can patch those terrible holes in the wall. Uh, what I saw too is something really weird they have this weird boxes and they're not attached to anything so i'm going to change out the outlet for this um and also i'm going to attach it to the to the joist that you can see over here so i'm just moving it and pre-cutting here and i'm going to try to make a, like a little box for this as well you'll see it when what i'm what i'm talking about when i'm when I'm finished. Um, so I'll just have to bring a couple of uh, wood joists, a little bit like maybe, I don't know what size, so I'll have to go see what I have for the scrap. Um, and then make a little box around this so that this is accessible, um, but only this part, not the whole uh, tube here. So just this part basically here, so that we can move and open and close the, the gas line. All right, so this is the first part, and I'm gonna take a picture to the before, and then I'll show you the after once I'm done, and I have to do it really fast, because we have people coming tomorrow to um, move. <clears throat> what is happening here is that we're moving everything to the right, because all the cabinets are configured in a way where everything is moving to the right. Um, and so all that that you see over there um, is gonna move over like about a feet and a half or two. So minimal, but it has to be moved. Um, and then our our stuff over there is, is leaking. It's just like falling apart. It's like it knew it was gonna be changed and then it said, oh yeah, we're, it's gonna fall apart. I'm gonna fall apart right now for you. <laughs> and you're gonna have to really change me. So that's what's happening and um, I'll keep you updated. Okay, so here's an update on how the wall behind the stove is looking. And as you can see, we have the joint compound that has dried. And we still, we're still showing a little bit of the tape there, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to go over with more to smooth it out and make it make it look really nice um <clears throat> as far as the outlet here what we noticed and my sister told me from the beginning is that this is a gfi and now every time the stove is a gas stove now every time we try to turn on the stove the the arc 
that it has to give so that the so that the flame um, can start it go it trips out it like turns off and then who's gonna take out the stove every time and reset the button nobody so I'm just gonna re replace with a regular 15 amp outlet and that's gonna be how it was like I have to leave it how it was that's one of the things that you have to think about before you do things um, so I'm gonna be doing this and I'll show you how everything turns out afterwards With the wall patched up, outlet in its place, and also the gas line installed in, cor in the correct place, we were on to putting on the first cabinet, and from there, just adding all of the wall cabinets, the lower ones at least, for the meantime. And so we started on with a crazy marathon of cabinet making and assembly. The next cabinet to make was for the kitchen sink and this one was an interesting one that we'll see later but for right now let's just appreciate the beauty of this beautiful farmer sink. I'm so happy I found this. on what we're doing in the kitchen <clears throat> so this weekend we had somebody come help us with uh, the plumbing for the sink to move all the the tubes and and the plumbing um, it was moved about two feet or yeah about two feet and so we're now just preparing to put in the the kitchen cabinet for the sink and the dishwasher that's gonna go right over here and then the sink is gonna go right there. In this area, we're gonna eliminate that tiny tiny window. We order, already ordered a um, 48 width by 36, which is gonna extend the, um, the opening there and we're gonna be able to see, have a good view for outside. Um, <clears throat> This is going to be eliminated because the window is actually going to come across here and right there and it's going to be in this area that you see there. And then over here we're going to have some open shelving uh, for our coffee station and um, right there we're going to have to move this which is the vent hood. I'm going to move it over, move it over to the right. And we're gonna have to fix that uh, electrical that's just hanging in there because that's the hole that they left when they first did this kitchen. And then we're gonna have a corner cabinet right here, um, another cabinet that's gonna come right along there, and then the pantry is gonna be this space, this open space that you see here. And then from here to here, we're gonna have the uh, over the fridge cabinets. Um, and then over here, we're gonna have a an 18, 18 inch um, <clears throat> uh, cabinet and then a 30 inch. And then on top of that, we're gonna have a tall um, cabinet on top, which is gonna, which is gonna hide all like the, the toaster and uh, little things like that. Maybe the, 
the mixer, anything, anything that I can fit in that little nook, we'll put there. But right now, as you can see, we have this. We don't have any counters. Everything is just like the bare bones. And one of the things that I was happy that we have been doing things kind of like in the order that they should be because they we ordered the countertops and that was a huge thing huge decision we we're gonna go for quartz and we went with Lowe's because they had a really good sale and its installation is included and uh, we had gone to several places and quoted and it was really high it was like up in the five thousand six thousand perhaps and this here we're gonna be doing the whole thing sorry about the mess here but this is the kitchen island we're gonna do that surface which was really big it's like 20 square feet and then all this stuff here um with this was like 34 square feet total um approximately for this um, estimate and it's gonna be about four thousand like with installation with everything and uh, we have the the material be $60, about $60 square foot with installation included. I think that, that was a pretty good deal. Um, one other thing is um, that for right now, we're doing the kitchen cabinet and a pan over over here. Sorry about the mess. Um, and we're putting the we're putting the base for the sink because it's a um, it's a fire clay farmer sink. So we're doing this. I saw this video where we have to put the the support because it's such a heavy such a heavy item, and <clears throat> we have the three quarter inch plywood, um, and hopefully this will be this will be good for the sink to be supported. And uh, for the meantime, we won't have a countertop for like a few, few weeks, three, maybe three weeks, four weeks. They have to come in <clears throat> and measure. They have to come and do all this, um, like the nice fitting and do everything uh, for the measurements. Uh, so we're going to have to like deal with that because we don't have the tops. But we'll probably have some plywood on top for the meantime. All right, so we'll, we'll keep you updated. And um, this is how we don't have a sink right now. <laughs> we are able to cook. We just don't know how we're gonna wash the dishes. Ikea sells you the cabinet for the farmer sink, thankfully, uh, which is a 36 inch wide. But we did have to do the base and the support for the kitchen sink because it's a heavy, heavy item. I made lateral supports on both sides and then made them at the height where my kitchen sink would be able to sit uh, comfortably and wouldn't uh, protrude out too much or would be too sunken in and then from there i had to open a hole in the middle as you see right there so that all of the draining um, mechanism could be installed and then we had our neighbor's son our friend Juan come over and he helped us with the plumbing because I do not do plumbing but I am so thankful that he was here to help us out and he gave us a great hand right there as you can see we were taking out the old cabinetry little by little and putting in the new cabinets with a new layout so that everything would be in its forever place uh, hopefully until maybe somebody comes and says hey I don't like this kitchen but for right now that's my plan how it was and we were adding the kitchen sink i added the the dishwasher and the countertops that we had the previous ones we had to chop them up as we were moved to the new cabinet layout so that we could have countertops but that was a good thing that we had like these disposable you could say uh, countertops we were just adjusting them as we needed them we are getting ready to put on the last two cabinets for the lower part of the kitchen. And as you can see here, we have uh, made like a little improv with the countertops that we already had. And we cut them and fit them to what, um, what we needed them to. 
And right now we have this cabinet and the sink cabinet and we have the dishwasher ready just to connect. And now the last part of the project is putting on the 18 inch cabinet right here and the 30 inch. And then they're gonna come tomorrow to measure for the countertops. And so we're really excited because that's a huge, huge help for us if we can have a counter space because it's been like um, like a puzzle trying to to get everything in in the right place because nothing is gonna this, nothing right now is where it's gonna be like the final the final place where everything is gonna be so we're just gonna like making do and as you can see here it's kind of messy but we've been we've been doing with my sister I have been um, putting together the last two cabinets we are also putting in the um, the faces here so that's why you see this coming out popping out because I have to like take it apart and then put it back together because I'm gonna have to put this uh, so that it it looks nice and we can have the the outlets in the right place and right here we have the last two cabinets this is the 30 inch cabinet and the 18 inch and so we're ready and we're about to put them in place so I have to move these two things here the temporary our temporary pantry and temporary coffee station and I did forget to mention and I just remember right now that I have to move this outlet to go up the wall so that we can put in and plug in the um, the coffee maker and uh, probably probably put some other stuff there because we need to we need to put the the light the light that's gonna go on the cabinet that's gonna go here in this top part so we also have to figure out figure out where this hanging um, switch is gonna go um, I was thinking of putting it here next to the outlet so we have to figure all those things out right now so it's gonna be more than just putting in the cabinets today guys help me god I have to do this today because tomorrow they're coming to measure okay this is what happens this is what happens when you're making a, a kitchen and something by yourself and thankfully I know a little bit about light electricity so let's see how everything turns out so far I'm really liking how everything is looking though I'm trying to do a connection here with the electrical and what I'm gonna be showing you is the the way that I'm gonna be doing this I ran into a little kind of like doubting moment because I didn't know what to do but I think I'm pretty sure now of what everything how everything is gonna go we are gonna have um, I'm gonna try to switch here we're gonna have the window here that you see we're gonna extend it, actually extending it towards that way. So it's gonna be a four by three, a four by three window. And as you can see here, we have the wires from some outlets and the switch that we're gonna to have to eliminate. And I'm going to transfer them. Yeah, I don't know if you can see here. I wanna transfer them around here. So, and we have to also get this switch that is, oops, <laughs> that is over here, that was on a little pony wall. Well, not a pony wall, like a, 
a wall that was just half like a quarter of a way um, but you can see over here how we took it out and it was on that wall that the switch was so we have to figure out now how to put this switch into this wall and as you can see the wires run all the way up so we're gonna have to figure out how to get this wiring that you have there put it down the wall and get it nice and tucked in we are gonna be taking out this portion of the wall um, so we have to figure out how to do it and this is where it gets tricky.